medicine. I've been an occupational therapist for 28 years. I'm also a yoga teacher and a massage therapist, and I have studied several types of touch therapy. And the reason I'm making this video is because I have seen so much suffering in my 28 years of being an occupational therapist, and much of it could be prevented through healthy lifestyle. And that's something I realize now that I didn't realize early on in my career. The medical community in general doesn't uh, know a lot about a raw foods diet, and, um, and I feel impelled to, to teach it and to share it to other people. I myself recovered from autoimmune illness following Dr. Cousins' diet. Uh, there, there was a time when I had a hard time doing simple things like rolling over in bed or getting out of a chair. I was very fatigued and now I am totally recovered, totally off medication. So what I want to do with this uh, video is introduce people to uh, Dr. Cousin's Phase 1.5 diet. The, the plan that he has is three phases. The first phase is Phase 1, which is no sugar at all, no fruit at all. It's uh, all three phases are completely raw, organic, vegan, and low glycemic. But phase one is the lowest glycemic, uh, no fruit. And then phase two, you can have grapefruit, cherries, and berries, except for blackberries. And then phase, that's phase 1.5. And then phase two, you can have um, some of the sweeter fruits, like bananas and kiwi and pineapple. And um, so I like to teach phase 1.5. A lot of the recipes that I'll be presenting are phase 1, uh, with a few that are phase 1.5. This diet is, has been shown to be extremely beneficial for diabetes, for, uh, for um, heart disease, it can help prevent cancer, it can help, um, help prevent relapse, or at least I, people who are, who are um, facing a possibility of relapse with cancer, it will definitely stack the deck in their favor. So for those that have already undergone treatment and want to prevent relapse, or for those who want to prevent cancer originating in the first place, it's a really good diet to follow. Not to say that you shouldn't do conventional therapies too. I mean, that's, um, that's, that's not at all what I'm saying. This diet is not only really good for helping people recover from uh, physical illness, but also it's, it's helpful, in pe help, helpful to promote um, emotional wellness and mental health and even spiritual development. And that's the reason that it's called spiritual nutrition, is it actually does have a, a very large effect on um, spiritual development. And there are reasons behind that that I go into in the course. And that's, uh, that's not, nothing that I'll go into today just for time constraints. But, um, but it's, it's helpful on all levels, mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. So with that said, I'll, I'll show you a few recipes. And, um, and I hope you learn a lot. I hope you enjoy it. And, um, and if you want to learn more, you can look me up at HealingSynergies.com. Thanks a lot. All right, uh, so the first recipe we're going to do is a simple almond milk. You can do uh, a nut or seed milk with pretty much any nut or seed, uh, but you do want to soak them first. Almonds probably are the most commonly used for milk. And uh, I've soaked these overnight in spring water, and I put a little bit of food grade hydrogen peroxide. This is 3% hydrogen peroxide. Uh, you can get this at Amazon.com. You can also get it at Tree of Life. Um, so I put maybe a tablespoon or two in the water and, uh, and just soak the almonds overnight and then drain them. So I just dump them into the box. And three cups of water. And then all I need to do is just blend it up for about three minutes. Okay, so now our almonds are all blended with the water. And we're just going to strain it through a nut milk bag. Though um, you don't have to strain it for this recipe we're going to do next. I don't usually strain it because I'm going to make a, a, a chia porridge. And it's, it's fine without straining it. If you're going to drink it like a milk, uh, then, then you definitely want to strain it because it's a little grainy. In fact, you might, if you're going to drink it for milk or use it um, you know, with raw granola or something like that, uh, it, you might want to double strain it, so have two of these bags, and uh, that'll make it uh, even less grainy. 
and that way you can just drink it like regular milk. So you just squeeze it through. And like I said, for this ne next recipe I'm going to do, um, I don't usually do this, I'm just mostly straining it to show you. What I'm going to be making is a chia porridge. Okay, so now we're going to make uh, the chia porridge. And we start with um, just dumping the milk back into the Vitamix because we're going to add coconut oil. And if you try to add coconut oil, if you try to just stir it in, it doesn't work very well. So I just blend it for a little bit in the Vitamix. The coconut oil has a really nice uh, taste. It's a little bit sweet. And also coconut oil has uh, been shown to be um, antibacterial and actually fights against a lot of pathogens that tend to accumulate sometimes in our body. And coconut oil also is, a, is has medium chain uh, fatty acids, which are good for our health. So coconut oil is a really, a really good food as well. So I'm just going to blend it up. Now we'll add all our other ingredients. Let's see, so we'll do about a teaspoon. This is uh, cinnamon. Cinnamon's really good, it's anti-inflammatory. And according to some studies, um, has been shown to help control uh, blood sugar. And then we'll do a half teaspoon of salt. In our pumpkin pie spice, we'll do a teaspoon of that. So two half teaspoons. Pumpkin pie spice is nice since it's a blend of several different spices. It's real quick to just you know put in a bunch of spice all at once. And then we'll add vanilla powder. This is quarter teaspoon. Chia seeds are gelatinous, uh, or at least they become gelatinous when they're exposed to liquid. So they, you know, they look like little bitty, kind of like dirt, until you put them in the uh, the liquid, and you want to stir it in so otherwise it gets kind of clumpy sometimes. And then they, oh, sorry, and then they expand. Um, over, you know, I usually let them sit for about 10 minutes or so, and over that period of time, uh, they'll expand and make a nice uh, porridge or pudding kind of consistency. And to me, chia porridge is sort of a, a comfort food. It's kind of like, to me, oatmeal. Um, it has a, this particular recipe has a nice spicy flavor, kind of reminds me of Christmas. So it's, it's just a nice replacement for some of those comfort foods that you didn't know were comfort foods till you gave them up following a raw food diet. So that's it, you just stir it all up. And then once it's nice and stirred, sometimes it will clump a little bit even if, um, even if you stir it in. So you know, just mash the clumps up against the bowl, and break them up. Actually, I think part of the clumps are that I added the spice first. Usually I add the chia seeds first. So that's probably a little bit better way to do it. And then shredded coconut makes it a little sweeter, it gives it a little bit more consistency, and I just love coconut. And then the last thing we'll add are just a couple of squirts of vanilla stevia. And vanilla stevia is wonderful, it's really a lifesaver on this type of diet because it's one of the two sweeteners that can be used in a phase one diet. Uh, the other one is xylitol. And xylitol is made from uh, bark from the birch tree. 
I have used xylitol in the past, and to me and for some other people too, honestly, it gives me some gastrointestinal symptoms, so I just mostly use stevia. But I use stevia in my tea, I, I flavor my water with it sometimes. Um, it's just a really good, really good uh, thing to have on this diet because it, it is pretty sweet. It does have a little bit of an aftertaste, um, but I don't really notice it too much anymore. And most people like stevia, or, get, or kind of get used to it. It comes in all different kinds of flavors. They've got orange, lemon, root beer, cola, um, strawberry, mixed berry, vanilla. They've got all kinds of flavors. So, and you can get it at Whole Foods or at Sprouts. They're probably pretty much any health food store. So now that's pretty much done. It's got a few clumps. Let me just mash those out a little bit. And then over the course of about 10 minutes or so, it'll, uh, it'll become more porridge-like. I told you I would show you what the tea of porridge looked like after a few minutes. It's actually been probably a little over an hour. And as you can see, it's uh, you know nice and thick. It has kind of the texture of oatmeal. And kind of, sort of, uh, taste reminiscent of oatmeal. And you can add a little bit more almond milk if you want it thinner, or you can add a little less if you want it to if you want it th uh, thicker. Okay, now we're going to make a uh, green lemonade. This is actually a pretty common recipe. It's uh, similar to the recipe that's used on the, the uh, documentary Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. Um, but you see this recipe all over the place because it's really good. Um, the difference between the way I make it and the way I've seen it in some other versions is that I add uh, some grape stevia or orange stevia or vanilla stevia, sometimes peppermint. I usually use two dropperfuls of something uh, at the end, and that just gives it a nice sweet flavor. To me, it tastes like green lemonade, and so that's what I call it to our granddaughter, who's four, like I mentioned before. She loves to help me make this, and she'll pull up a chair to the countertop, and she will initiate it herself. She'll say, you know, make some green juice, and uh, so anyway, she loves it. She drinks it, and when she, uh, when she drinks it, she goes <laughs> afterwards before she swallows because she just likes the flavor so much. And I recently gave a little bit to our little granddaughter, who's uh, her, her sister, who's about a year old, and she drank it out of her bottle, and, and uh, when she wants more to eat, she goes, so she drank it out of her bottle, and then put the bottle up and said, so she drank probably about three ounces, and uh, she seemed to enjoy it too. So I'm super excited, because this is a, a good recipe. Um, you know, a lot of kids don't, don't eat a lot of vegetables, and, and my granddaughters are no exception. I mean, that's just typical for little kids a lot of times, uh, but they will drink the green juice, and I'm now going to get them started on green smoothies. Uh, last time I tried to give Elizabeth a green smoothie, she, uh, she declined it in favor of green juice, so we'll start working on that next. But anyway, it's a pretty simple recipe. I'm just going to turn the juicer on, and we'll, this is kale. We'll put that in first. Kale is a superfood. Really, all greens are a superfood, but the, the dark, leafy greens are really, really good for our health. Um, they're very high in vitamins A and C and K. Um, they have a multitude of vitamins and minerals, and they really should be a staple in our diet, but, um, but they really aren't. For other primates, such as chimpanzees, their diet's about half greens. And, um, you know, I think the standard American diet, you might have a little side salad with your barbecue. But, um, but they really should be a staple. They, I mean, ideally, that would be great if we can do 50% of our diet from greens. But it's not easy to do, and one really easy way to get a bunch of greens in your diet is to juice them or to make a, make a green smoothie. Um, people sometimes uh, ask me, you know, what, was it better to juice or to make a smoothie? And my answer is both are good. Uh, the advantage to juicing is that it removes the fiber, and so it's much more, uh, it's assimilated a lot easier, it's absorbed a lot easier. So uh, if you don't have the fiber getting in the way, you know, the, the tissues just absorb the juice really well. Um, the advantage to a smoothie is that you do get the fiber because fiber does have benefits and you know, it helps flush out the digestive system. Also a juicer, juice takes longer to make, it takes, it's more labor intensive to clean up, though this particular juicer is not too bad. It usually takes me about, between getting everything out and washing it off and juicing it and cleaning it up, it takes me about 35 minutes uh, to do a green juice. 
Um, whereas a smoothie, you just kind of dump everything in the blender and, uh, and blend it, and then cleanup's real easy too. So it takes me maybe, I would say, 15 or 20 minutes, maybe less than that, to do a smoothie. Um, so juice takes longer. I, I generally like the flavor of a juice a little bit better, but I like both. So you really can't go wrong with either juicing or with a smoothie. Uh, you can also make a juice using a Vitamix or, or a really good quality blender of any type. The two best blenders that I've seen are the Vitamix and the K-Tech. Though I haven't personally used the K-Tech, it just comes with good reviews. Um, so you can blend it all up and make a vegetable smoothie and then strain it through a nut milk bag and then it's a juice. The disadvantages to that are that, um, that when you blend it, it oxidizes everything more and ideally you don't want the juice really well oxidized because it uh, kind of damages some of the nutrients. Still really good for you, but, but just maybe not optimal. So this is a, an auger type juicer, and, uh, and it oxidizes it less than a centrifugal juicer, which more, looks more like a washing machine, kind of spins out the nutrients. So this is a good quality juicer. It's about um, $250 to $300. I, John got mine, my husband got mine at Costco. And uh, I think it's a really, really good juicer for the price. The pulp comes out pretty dry compared to some of the less expensive juicers. Um, so, but you could also go with a less expensive juicer. We also have a Jack LaLanne, for example, and we used to have a Breville. Both of those worked pretty well for us. Uh, the pulp doesn't come out quite as dry with those as it does with a Huron. So anyway, this is what, this is what I use. It's a Huron. And um, so anyway, we'll go ahead and get started. kale and celery because the celery helps uh, push the kale through. And then lemon. Um, the recipe I follow calls for one lemon. Sometimes I'll use two if they're small. So uh, these, these are two small lemons. You can also do uh, lime, or you can do a combination of lemon and lime. You want to slice the lemon um, in about fourths. It does tend to jam up the juicer if you do great big hunks. So that's, that's about it. So you just let the juice run out. And then we'll strain it. This is a, Another nut milk bag, you can use a nut milk bag if you want to, if you don't like the pulp. Um, this particular juicer does um, create a pretty pulpy juice, but um, you can strain it out if you want to. I used to make it without using the nut milk bag, but uh, my husband didn't like the pulp in it, so, so that's why I strained it. But you can do it either way, just according to preference. And just like with the almond milk, you just squeeze it out. Our granddaughter likes to help me with this part too, which is pretty messy, but she, she loves it. She was helping me last week and she said, help Alma make green juice. So you just squeeze it out. And then the pulp, you know, usually I just compost it, but you can also um, save it and, and add it to crackers that you can make in the dehydrator. But we do create quite a lot of compost with the raw foods diet and it's nice to have a place to put it. So it just recycled back into the earth. So once you get it all squeezed out, then you can add the stevia. And I usually use two squirts of something. So I'm going to do orange and grape. So then you just stir it up, and, uh, and that's all there is to it. Usually I make about this much. I usually buy enough uh, greens to make five green juices or and or smoothies a week. And uh, so I just make this much, and I drink about three-fourths of it and take about a fourth of it to my husband, and um, that's kind of our routine. All right, so now we're going to make a uh, green smoothie. Green smoothies were popularized by Victoria Butinko who is a wonderful woman um, 
immigrant from Russia with her came came from Russia with her family, and they had uh, all kinds of health problems. I think the standard American diet didn't help. Um, I think Victoria said she gained something like 80 pounds her first year here in the United States. Uh, and she, she said uh, that when she first went into a, a big grocery store, she was telling her family, um, you know, this is American food, it's all carefully researched, it's all really good for you, and she found, found out otherwise. But anyway, she healed her family um, using a raw food diet, uh, all kinds of different illnesses. Uh, she was depressed and had atrial fibrillation, her husband, Igor had a thyroid mass or throat mass of some sort and, uh, and rheumatoid arthritis. She had to tie his shoes. And uh, their son, Sergei, was eight and was diagnosed with juvenile onset diabetes. And their daughter, Valia, had asthma really bad. So they all went on a raw food diet all together at the same time. And Sergei never did have to go on insulin. And uh, Valia never had another asthma attack. And they all ran in a 10K a few months, or maybe a 5K a few months later. So it, it's Green smoothies is the way she did it. She had done some research to see what was the best, um, the best thing to include in your diet, and she looked at the UST, USRDA, and um, compared a bunch of different foods, you know, hamburgers and French fries and you know fruits and vegetables and everything to see what best matched the USRDA. And what she found were greens were the the thing that gave us the most nutrients. So she tried to eat you know, a whole bunch of greens in one day and found that she couldn't do it. And um, so she finally put them in a blender and blended up with water and she said it tasted pretty bad. And then she stuck a banana in it and it tasted, tasted better, tasted like banana. So it's, um, you know, basically a green smoothie is any combination of greens and water and fruit. But you could put other things in there too. Sometimes I'll put cucumber or celery or, you know, other, other vegetables in there. But basically, it's, uh, it's greens and fruit and whatever else, whatever other vegetables you want to do. Um, I've chosen strawberries because strawberries are on the phase 1.5 diet. They're a low glycemic fruit. Um, on phase 1, you can have no fruit at all. Phase 1.5, you can have berries and cherries and grapefruit, except for blackberries. So, um, so I still try to keep the fruit down to a minimum. It's just a cup of strawberries, and then I sweeten it further with uh, strawberry-flavored stevia. So it's uh, real simple to put together. I just put about a cup of water, and then about three handfuls of greens. These are about three handfuls for me. Actually, I'm going to wait and do that. I'm going to do the strawberries first. Sometimes it's a little easier to blend up the strawberries first. So I'm just going to blend these. Now if you add too much at a time, sometimes the blender gets a little jammed. Again, spinach is one of those dark, leafy greens that are so good for your health in so many different ways. Uh, again, a good source of vitamin A and C and K, and uh, just very good for your health just in general. I try to do, as I said before, I try to do a green smoothie or a green juice at least five days a week. Okay, and may, hopefully that'll blend now. I'm just going to add some lime juice, and of course lime is a really good source of vitamin C, just like lemon. And I, uh, you can do the juice of one lime if you want to. I really like lime a lot, so I use two limes, if they're small, and these are fairly small. To me, um, what I mostly taste in this recipe is the lime and the strawberries. Yeah, it has, to me it's reminiscent of a strawberry daiquiri. Only a lot healthier. It's a little easier to get the juice out of the limes if you roll them on a table first and just with a little pressure using the palm of your hand and then the juice comes out easier. So I rolled these before I sliced them.
Okay. And uh, then I'm going to add um, a tablespoon of hemp seeds. Hemp seeds are also considered a superfood. They're high in omega-3s and they're also high in protein. They're complete protein. And it's about four grams of protein per tablespoon. So I usually add one to two tablespoons. And then I'm going to put a squirt of strawberry stevia. You can also use mixed berry or vanilla or orange. Probably a lot of different flavors that would work well in this. I usually use the berry, either strawberry or mixed berry. Okay, so just blend it up. recipe by Brandy Rollins. I'm just starting with tomatoes. These are four Roma tomatoes. Hopefully that'll blend well. Okay, now I'm going to add sun-dried tomatoes. Dried tomatoes give it a, a much richer flavor than just regular tomatoes. And I'm also going to add some seasoning. So we're going to do a fourth of a teaspoon of thyme. A fourth teaspoon of salt. And half a teaspoon of oregano. teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. It is surprising how much this recipe tastes like tomato sauce that you're used to. I think it's very flavorful. In fact, I like it better than, than a jar of tomato sauce. Okay, so we'll just blend that up. So now we have our marinara sauce all blended up, and uh, you just blend it again until it's just warm to the touch. And you can also heat up the noodles if you want to in a dehydrator if you have one. You can just put it at about 145 for maybe half an hour or so, and that'll heat them up, or at least warm them a little bit. And uh, usually I add a little bit of olive oil, maybe a tablespoon or so. salt, just a little bit, maybe a fourth of a teaspoon, and then you mix that up, and when you uh, mix the salt with the noodles, it kind of breaks down the cell walls of the noodles a little bit, and makes them more lump, like uh, a like spaghetti. And then to serve it, just put a little bit in a bowl. Noodles are kind of ruffly, so sometimes I cut them up a little bit. And then you top that with the marinara sauce. top it with a little bit of um, cherry tomatoes and uh, fresh basil kind of julienne on top. And then I like to top it with a few hemp seeds. So there's our, uh, our raw spaghetti and it's really good. I like it as well or better than regular spaghetti with marinara sauce.
Next we're going to make a sunflower pate. This is a, a recipe that, that I've kind of made up. I, it was inspired by uh, sunflower pates uh, made by Brandy Rollins who does the uh, Raw Food on a Budget program and Nomi Shannon who does the How to Be a Raw Teacher program which, which I participated in both of those and they're really good programs. But I kind of combined both and then added some other stuff. And So this one I call the sunflower, pot, sunflower power pate. Um, it starts with, well the base is sunflower seeds, but we're first going to put in garlic and shallots. In case anybody doesn't know what a shallot looks like, before I took the wrapper off it looked somewhat like that. And so you take the wrapper off, and I'm going to use about half of a shallot. It's kind of like an onion for those who are not familiar. So pop that in there and then I'm going to use two cloves of garlic. Um, a good way to peel garlic is to smush it and then just take the wrapper off. It comes off really easily if you smush it first. It doesn't, not so much if you don't smush it. So and I'll also put, um, with this recipe you can do either tahini, uh, which is uh, sunflower seed um, butter basically. Um, it's just ground up sunflower seeds, or you can use, I'm, I'm sorry, not sunflower seeds, um, sesame seeds. Or you can use uh, just the straight sesame seeds, which I'm more likely to have on hand. So I'm just going to use the sesame seeds, but I'm going to put them in first with the garlic and the shallot. And the reason I'm doing these first is that I want to get them good and ground up. So I'll just put them in the processor. Is that they're really cheap. They're only about three dollars a pound and this is only two cups of sunflower seeds but then when you soak them they swell some so that's why it looks like so much. So it makes a good deal of pate. Um, sunflower seeds are also great because they're a really good source of vitamin E and vitamin E is the primary fat soluble uh, antioxidant in our body. So this um, vitamin E being fat soluble helps to decrease free radical damage to cell membranes and to brain cells. So it's a really good antioxidant. Um, sunflower seeds are also a really good source of selenium. And there's a strong inverse correlation between selenium and cancer risk. So sunflower seeds are good for a lot of reasons. And these I just soaked overnight and then uh, sprouted them a little bit this morning. And again, this is only two cups of sunflower seeds, so less than three dollars worth of sunflower seeds. And I'm going to add to that a half teaspoon of dill. salt. You can add a little bit more. Again, I don't like my recipes just real salty, so you can do a little more if you want to. A half teaspoon works for me. And a half teaspoon of yellow mustard. And this is, of course, just the powder. And because I'm a little bit of a wimp, I'm not going to do a half teaspoon of cayenne, I'm going to do about a fourth teaspoon. Even though I am from Texas. And do a tablespoon of olive oil. to a cup of parsley and my husband very graciously grows this in his greenhouse for me. And then this might be a little bit of a surprise. I'm going to add um, about 12 drops of stevia. And the reason 
reason I do that is because, um, again, this is a phase one recipe, so um, I don't want to add apple or grapes or something like that that you might expect in, in some chicken salads, for example. And so it kind of gives the flavor of a chicken salad, sort of, without having to add the, uh, the fructose. And the last thing we'll add is lemon juice. It's about three, three lemons, about half a cup. Okay, so that's all there is to that. And we'll just blend it all up. So the nice thing about a pâté, there, there are lots and lots and lots and lots of different pâtés you can make on a raw foods diet. A, the pâté is basically uh, any combination of seeds and nuts and vegetables and spices. Um, so you can use walnuts, there's a nice walnut pâté I make, there's a pecan pâté I make. Uh, you know, you can just use whatever nuts and seeds you have on hand. And, um, and there are lots and lots of recipes. There are a lot of recipes in Rainbow Green Live Food Cuisine. There are a lot of recipes you can find online. And they taste really different depending on what, um, what combination of nuts and spices and herbs you use. For example, there's one in Rainbow Green Live Food Cuisine that is kind of like a pâté. Um, it starts out as a pâté. And you wouldn't think that you could make raw bratwurst with a raw foods diet, especially a raw vegan diet. But, but you can. It's uh, basically nut and um, avocado based and a bunch of spices. And the spices make it taste a lot like sausage. And then you just roll it into, shape it into little sausage shapes and dehydrate it for a couple of hours. Um, and then you can, I usually eat it with sauerkraut. So anyway, um, there are all kinds of different varieties of pâtés. And, and like I said, they're, they're uh, real different depending on what combination of nuts and spices you use or seeds. So I'm going to show you some serving suggestions for this pâté. Um, you can put it on a, a bell pepper or you can slice up cucumber slices and serve it on the cucumber slices. You can put it in a lettuce leaf or a cabbage leaf. So I'll, uh, I'll you know, make up a little platter and show you that. All right, now we're back uh, to make a uh, tomato soup. And this is a real easy tomato soup to make. Um, again, we're just gonna use the Vitamix. Start with about a cup of water. And I'm going to add the tomatoes, I think, as it's blending. That's probably the easiest way. Uh, you do wanna slice the tomatoes. I've tried before just putting whole tomatoes in the Vitamix. They don't blend very well. So we'll start with tomatoes. source of lycopene. That's what gives tomatoes their color. And lycopene has been shown to be uh, cancer preventative. It's also really good for cardiovascular health. Tomatoes are also a good source of vitamin C, as are the lemons. And vitamin C's are, of course, a, an excellent antioxidant. And the antioxidants take care of the free radicals in the body that can cause tissue damage. So the Antioxidants help to neutralize the free radicals. So that has um, anti-aging benefits and lots of other benefits, lots of health benefits. I'm gonna add walnuts 
It's about three fourths cups of walnuts, and I soaked them overnight. The walnuts are a good source of omega threes. Um, walnuts are good for your skin, and for your hair, for your heart. They're a, they're really good uh, good food to have. So I'm going to add about a teaspoon of the Himalayan sea salt. You can add a little more if you'd like. I don't like my recipes just real salty. About a teaspoon works for me. A teaspoon of dried basil. Teaspoon of oregano. And then I'm going to add about a fourth of a teaspoon of black pepper and uh, cinnamon. One of the nice things about um, using a Vitamix is that if you blend for long enough, about three minutes or so, then um, it will heat up whatever you have in the Vitamix because of the friction. And it's uh, real easy to create a nice warm soup. You don't want it too warm. You don't, don't want it over 115 degrees because over 115 degrees it's, it's no longer considered raw. But um, you just want it just kind of barely warm to your hands. And um, it has a, a real comforting kind of uh, feeling when, in the winter. You know, it's really nice to have a warm soup. It's almost like, um, you know, when mom used to make the Campbell's tomato soup with the milk, only this is a lot healthier. And I think this recipe actually tastes a lot like uh, Campbell's tomato soup, only to me it tastes better. So I'm just going to blend this for about three minutes. Now it's blended about three minutes and it's a little bit warm to the touch. And now we have a nice hearty tomato soup. This is actually a modification of a recipe uh, in Dr. Cousin's book, Rainbow Green Live Food Cuisine, which is uh, kind of the basis for this program. It has lots of different recipes in it. It's basically about the only book I used while I was recovering from my autoimmune arthritis. But it has wonderful recipes in it. So anyway, a nice soup. You can sprinkle a little basil on top if you want to for garnish, but uh, it's a very tasty, warm, nourishing, comforting soup. Okay, now we're going to make uh, carob bars, like a protein bar. Um, the nice thing about carob is that it is um, it's a good chocolate substitute. And chocolate is maybe not the best thing to eat because it stimulates the adrenals and can lead to adrenal fatigue. So carob has a similar taste to chocolate, and it's, um, it's actually a little sweeter and a little lighter. It's uh, high in fiber, it's high in antioxidants. It's also antiviral and antibacterial. And for me, it works. You know, when I have a chocolate craving, if I have a carob bar, it kind of it suffices. So, um, in fact, one time I made this recipe with uh, raw cacao powder by accident, and and as soon as I tasted it, I, I thought, this isn't as good. Why isn't it as good? And then I realized it was actually, actually chocolate rather than carob. So I guess I've uh, developed a, a taste for carob over chocolate sometimes, which is astounding. Um, so these are just almonds that I've soaked. One of the things about almonds is that um, to buy raw almonds, you pretty much have to order them online. Uh, because if you go to Whole Foods or another health food store and it says raw almonds, they're actually probably not raw uh, because there was a law passed several years ago that, that almonds have to be pasteurized. So even if it's indicated that they're raw, they're probably pasteurized. Unless you Google raw unpasteurized almonds and, uh, and order them online. Uh, they do allow a certain percentage of uh, farmers acreage to be devoted to raw unpasteurized almonds, which I don't completely understand, but you can, you can still order them unpasteurized, but you just have to pay attention. So if it says raw and you get it at a health food store, it's probably not raw. That's not the same with other nuts as far as I know, it's just almonds. So anyway, these I ordered from Bremner Farms online. So I'm just going to put that in the food processor along with a little hunk of ginger. And okay, and now I'm just going to add all my other ingredients. I've got 
got the raw carrot powder to cut. And this is a mixture of raw almonds and raw hemp seeds. So I've got uh, about a fourth of a cup of hemp seeds and a fourth of a cup of almonds. And the original recipe that I'm adapting this from was from one of Dr. Cousins' recipes from Rainbow Green Life Food Cuisine uh, called Carob Bent Flat Bars. Uh, this is a little bit different. I added some things and changed some things. Uh, one of the deals is it calls for coconut water, and um, I, I'm not real fond of cracking coconuts. I mean, it, it can be done, and it's, you know, if you have a machete, it makes it easier. But it's even easier if you just put in about a fourth of a cup of raw shredded coconut and a fourth of a cup of water. So that's what that is. And for a lot of recipes, that works just fine. So for raw food recipes that call for coconut water, you can uh, a lot of times substitute that. And then this is coconut oil. Coconut oil, uh, lately I've seen it in flavors. Uh, Ziggy Marley has put out some coconut oil. And he has a lemon ginger one and a, an almond orange one. So if you want some variety in your dishes, you know, you can, you can try those coconut oils too. And then salt to taste. Um, let's see. I'm going to put in maybe between a fourth and a half teaspoon of salt, about a fourth. Chia seeds. There was a study done on almonds that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine that uh, suggested that a greater intake of almonds tends to promote longevity. So if you want to live longer, you might consider eating almonds. Okay, vanilla stevia. I'm going to put two squirts. And this is peppermint spirits, which I get at Whole Foods. You could use peppermint oil, but you would want to use a food grade, which uh, I haven't been able to find in the health food stores. You would probably have to order that online, too. Young Living, I think, makes a food grade peppermint essential oil. The peppermint spirits are not as concentrated as a pure essential oil. Uh, so I use about, if you use the essential oil, you might use about four to six drops. With this, I use about six dropperfuls. So we'll just blend that up in the food processor. Okay, now we have our batter. And then from here, all we're going to do is just spread it out on a Teflex sheet. We could also use, you know, a cutting board or plate or something like that. But these are Teflex sheets that are used in the dehydrator. If you want to dehydrate this, you can. Um, and usually I do for a little bit. I de dehydrate them for a couple of hours. But I usually, honestly, I like it so much, I usually have a little bit before I dehydrate it. So it's one of those you can do whatever you like. So we're just going to smush it out on the Teflex sheet and then cut it into bars. Okay, so now we'll just cut it into bars. These make a nice, um, kind of a nice Christmas cookie, or you know, when you're trying to, um, if you got something to take to a party, you know, you're trying to impress people with raw food and give them something that tastes really good. This is a quick, easy thing to do. So you just slice them into bars, and then you can use a spatula and put them on the plate, and like I said, you can dehydrate them. If you have a dehydrator, you can dehydrate them for an hour or two, um, but you don't have to. So anyway, these are very tasty and low glycemic. They are phase 1.5 on Dr. Cousin's uh, phase chart. So they're a little higher glycemic than, than most of the recipes we've done today, but they, uh, they still fall within phase 1.5. The coconut is phase 1, but the carrot powder is phase 1.5. 
So anyway, they're really delicious. I wish I could share them with you.